Hello, people of the internet. We are back with another Wheel Terms Explained, where we attempt to give you the most intricate and extensive wheel knowledge that you can find out there on the old interweb. I'm Scott from Koenig, and the first term that we're going to introduce you to today is backspacing. Now, this is a pretty familiarized term that we hear quite a bit, but what is it? What is the actual difference? People commonly confuse this for offset, which backspacing is not. So backspacing is really simple. It's essentially, if you were to lay the wheel down on the face of the wheel and put a straight edge over the back of the wheel, it's a distance from the back of the wheel down to the mounting pad. And so the reason that that is commonly used more in American and domestic cars or more in off-road vehicles is because they're more concerned with the clearance from the back of the wheel inboard, right? In toward the strut. They're trying to make sure that they have the minimum space so that that wheel or tire package doesn't crash inboard. And better yet, when they turn the wheels, that that scrub radius doesn't come in contact with any suspension or things like their bumpers or rockers. So you'll find more of the regular passenger vehicles and most of the uh, regular non-truck related things are all referred to in offset. So the difference between backspace and offset really is just that the backspacing kind of refers from the back edge of the wheel inboard and offset would refer to kind of how the wheel fits in and out. So one of the other terms that we need to let you know what it is, is the mounting pad. And the mounting pad is essentially the part of the wheel that's in the back that would mount to your rotor. That's the part that actually touches the hub of the vehicle. And when you put the bolts through is the part that would mate with the car. So the mounting pad should be known, one, so that when it's referred to as far as you installing your wheel, you know kind of what they're talking about. And two, uh, because if you have a big brake kit or something to that effect, uh, the mounting pad actually is gonna be the first point where it's gonna start to make that turn up to the spoke. And sometimes you'll have a wheel that has a very tall mounting pad. And if you do, if you have a brake that actually is low, that actually could be a first point of contention where the brake could actually meet the spoke and cause a fitment issue. So, so just knowing what the mounting pad is, is actually pretty useful. And now you know it. Okay, these next two terms, we're gonna use a wheel to demonstrate. This is a Neoform in case you wanna buy it. <laughs> Neoform. Neoform. Anyhow, uh, let's get into the next term, uh, bead seat. And essentially what a bead seat is, is where the tire bead is going to seat. And that is gonna be the flat part that you'll see on a wheel, both front and back right here. You'll see this little hump here. This is actually to help retain the bead in case you were to have a lower air pressure or the tire endures some lateral movement. Um, but right here is your bead seat. This is where the tire mounts if you're going to have you know, kind of any leaks or whatever, they're gonna be between here and here. Pretty obvious. Interesting note about the bead seats. Uh, this is actually how you determine the width of your wheel. Uh, it's measured from here to here, not from here to here. It's often something that people get confused when they call in, they don't really know what size wheel they have, and they say, hey, I got a, you know, a 10 and a half, and it really turns out to be that they have a 10, because this is where you're supposed to measure the width of a wheel. Okay. This term is also gonna use the wheel, and this is why, because we just talked about bead seats, now we're gonna talk about runout. Now, there are two types of runout that when we talk about wheels, we're the most concerned with. Runout essentially means kind of how much uh, something is out of shape. So if we were to spin this wheel perfectly centric, how much is this bead seat move up or down, if it's, again, perfectly centric and spinning. Uh, and also, we're gonna talk about more of a lateral move where we're gonna check the run out on the outer edge or the inner edge of a wheel. So now run out is the definition of basically when you have a wheel that's out of round or bent. And by having a dial indicator here, you'll actually be able to see if the wheel is out of round on this flange. You're checking for the run out and you could do the same thing on the back bead as well. This is what determines whether a wheel is out of round. Now, let's talk about the runout in the other sense. Runout can be found on the interior flange and it can also be found on the front flange. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that your wheel is bent in spec, so to say, but um, if you put a dial indicator here, if the wheel had incurred, let's say, curb damage or a hard lateral impact, or maybe you're racing and you have gone off 
and when you went off track, you kind of had the wheel turned all the way, you might see that this wheel from the leverage point of having the tire on it and kind of taking that hit is gets pushed back. And so that's how you can determine if this wheel is bent. And you can do that by again, dial indicator on the front and checking the run out uh, in a lateral sense. So we hope you found these terms useful. Again, our job here is to make sure we're spreading that wheel information and education across the whole entire interweb. So if you want to share this out, uh, there might be somebody here that wants to know some of this information that we dropped on you today. Thanks for hanging out with us and we will catch you on the next one.